Uh oh, Stardust oh, rolling oh, through. Oh, Stardust has got oh, it. Oh, Stardust got it. WWE's production team is one of the best in the world, but we're all human and humans make mistakes. WWE puts on hundreds of shows every year, so naturally there are going to be some technical issues. One incident where WWE played the wrong theme song happened in 2014. In the lead up to their SummerSlam match, things were getting pretty tense between Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins. The lunatic fringe, still upset over Rollins' betrayal, would take any opportunity to attack his former Shield brother. After defeating RVD, Rollins was a little suspicious of the gifts sitting on the stage for Hulk Hogan's birthday celebration. Seth's concerns turned out to be correct because Dean Ambrose emerged from one of the boxes and attacked his SummerSlam opponent. Seth Rollins managed to escape and Ambrose got on the mic. Dean warned Seth to run while he still could because at SummerSlam there would be no way out. It was an awesome moment, but unfortunately, instead of playing Ambrose's theme song, this got played instead. Guys, unstable is I don't know if that's enough to describe Dean Ambrose. You know, the music sounded like it belonged on Total Divas, and Dean Ambrose looked legitimately confused and upset. The original NXT back in 2010 had its fair share of issues. One of them was the audio. After completing an obstacle course challenge, David Otunga walked towards the ring for his match. WWE's production team didn't know what song to play though, resulting in this. No rest for the weary, but nonetheless, Justin Gabriel still with the time to beat here in the Rookie Challenge this week. One minute. After returning from commercial break, things had been fixed and just in time for R-Truth to make his entrance. Shortly after DDP's stalker character ended, the former WCW World Champion began a new gimmick. He started portraying a positive, motivational speaker who was always smiling. DDP came out one night on Raw to discuss how losing was actually a good thing. Without warning, an explosion of flames erupted and the devil's favorite demon, Kane, appeared. Unfortunately, someone in the audio department accidentally played the wrong theme song, causing this to happen. Live your life! Oh! Despite the mistake, the rest of the segment went smoothly. DDP tried to convince Kane that the Big Red Machine's loss to Tess the previous night was actually a good thing. Kane in turn responded by choke slamming DDP and walked away, luckily with the correct song playing this time. The main event of SmackDown in 2003 was a massive tag team match between John Cena and Brock Lesnar against Undertaker and Kurt Angle. It was a hard hitting back and forth match where either side could have won. In the end, John Cena knocked Kurt Angle out with his chains to secure the win. Despite Cena and Lesnar being the winners, WWE's audio team refused to acknowledge them and played Undertaker's theme song instead, inadvertently creating an ironic moment. Luckily, a brawl on the outside between Brock Lesnar and Undertaker helped cover up the mistake. This error in particular was so bad that WWE actually went back and re-edited the show so that John Cena's music played. Santino Morella and Lord Tensai were presenting the LOL moment of the year, and one of the nominees was Daniel Bryan and Kane. The Rock ended up winning, which made Bryan upset. He came storming out to protest the victory, but unfortunately, the sound guy thought he was someone else. I mean, they are about the same height. Weeks before WrestleMania 21, Muhammad Hassan was upset that he didn't have a match on the show, despite never being pinned on Raw. Hassan decided to air his frustrations live on TV. Unfortunately, his passionate rant was ruined by one sound guy. Well, Hassan uh, still protesting that he's not on the... At the Backlash pay-per-view in 2000, Jeff and Matt Hardy, along with four other wrestlers, had a massive brawl for the Hardcore Championship. Despite there being a 1 in 3rd chance of a Hardy winning the match, the eventual winner was actually Crash Holly. Whoever was doing sound that night really wanted Jeff or Matt to win though, because this is what happened after Crash got the pin. Los Matadores got one of the biggest wins of their career when they defeated the Usos on Raw. I guess Miz wanted to come out and celebrate with them, but quickly changed his mind. Los Matadores have not got the Usos. Three seconds is all it takes. Here are your winners. 
days before Halloween in 2016, Kane and Bray Wyatt went all out on SmackDown in a no disqualification match. It looked like Luke Harper was going to interfere and help Wyatt, but from out of nowhere came Randy Orton. The Viper had been feuding with Bray for a while, but he shockingly attacked Kane and allowed his rival to get the win. The moment went from shocking to confusing due to what happened next. Randy Orton is our killed Kane and a quad. I guess the sound guy just really likes Randy's music. At the third annual Rebellion pay-per-view event, the Hardys, the APA, and the Dudley Boys went head-to-head -head in a triple threat elimination match. The keyword there is elimination. Apparently, someone in production didn't get that memo, as when Hardy pinned Farouk, the Dudley Boys theme song started playing. After the Dudley's double team, and the APA have been eliminated. This ended up spoiling the finish of the match because Bubba Ray and Devon eventually eliminated the Hardys to win. Before the 1999 Royal Rumble, D-Generation X decided to face the corporation in a 10-man Rumble match with the winner earning the number 30 entrant. The WWE sound team must have gotten their notes mixed up because they played the New Age Outlaws theme song even though Tess was the one coming out. During his reign as Cruiserweight Champion, Enzo Amore was in the ring doing one of his usual rants. Then, suddenly... Despite what the music implied, Kurt Angle was the one who actually came out. However, Pete Dunne did eventually appear, and he knocked the snot out of Enzo Amore. I really have no idea how the sound guy messed this one up. On an episode of Raw in 2001, the Hardys were facing off against the Radicals, Dean Malenko and Perry Saturn, with Eddie Guerrero chilling ringside to support his teammates. After both teams entered, this suddenly happened. And certainly the Radicals, as we heard earlier, I wonder where Eddie's allegiance lies. Not only had Eddie Guerrero already made his entrance, he wasn't even in the match. I don't think this sound guy was around much longer after this. 